morning, distinguished uh, colleagues. Thank you for your time this morning. In today's uh, press conference, I'm going to brief the latest uh, development on the Korean Peninsula with regard to the ongoing U.S.-South Korea joint military exercises, Ulji Freedom Guardian. In this regard, TPRK made another formal request through its letter addressed to the current president of the UN Security Council for emergency meeting with regard to this Ulji Freedom Guardian joint military exercises as an agenda of the Security Council. This is the second time the DPRK presented a formal request after DPRK made the first request on July 21st. As to the motives and reasons why DPRK made another request for this emergency meeting in the Security Council agenda as an agenda item in that meeting, I can give you two basic motives and reasons. The first motive and reason is because this Ulti Freedom Guardian joint military exercise is not simply annual or routine defensive nature military exercises as the U.S. shamelessly continuing to advertise to the international community. But this is strictly and totally aggression war exercises and total nuclear war exercises targeted against the DPRK. As you know, last week, Monday, the 18th August, the U.S., despite repeated and strong warnings from the DPRK, pushed ahead with the planned Ulti Freedom Guardian joint military exercises. Very provocative, very dangerous, very aggressive nature. As far as the history of this exercise, Ulji Freedom Guardian is concerned, this is very notorious for its shameful world record covering six decades for over half a century. This was not started recent years, one or two years ago. This dates back to 1954. Since that time onwards, it was held ceaselessly with no single year skipping or exceptionally left out. This exercise is in terms of its nature and scale, it is also very negative and most dangerous, the largest military exercises. Concerning the ongoing Ulti Freedom Guardian joint military exercises, over half a million personnel and troops, including South Korea occupying US troops, the reinforcement troops from the United States, South Korea ground, naval, and air forces with a massive concentration of all different types of weapons, including nuclear weapons. As far as the purpose of this exercise is concerned, the United States is not hiding the fact that this is purely and totally aimed at Pyongyang occupation by openly declaring they are applying the tailored, so-called tailored deterrence strategy to this exercise. The so-called uh, tailored deterrence strategy is uh, what the U.S. and South Korea finally agreed last year, October, U.S.-South Korea joint annual security consultation meeting. This is reflecting the so-called nuclear crisis in the Korean Peninsula, in the TPRK, dividing three into three stages. The first stage is the stage 
of threats from the nuclear weapons of the DPRK. The second stage is the stage close to the use of nuclear weapons by the DPRK. The third stage is the stage of use of nuclear weapons by the DPRK. The particular stage being focused by the United States is the second stage. Under this stage, as far as the U.S. concludes, the DPRK is close to the use of nuclear weapons. They are to take nuclear preemptive strike with all different means of power, including nuclear weapons. Now the question is the language in the second stage, which is, the, as you can see, this is a core aspect of this uh, tailored deterrence strategy, uh, the stage of use of nuclear weapons by DPRK. The language is very ambiguous, intentionally left vague by the United States. It is only up to the judgment of the U.S. when to make that kind of judge as the stage close to the use of nuclear weapons. Now, at any time under this second stage, the U.S. can enter into taking nuclear preemptive strike concluding that DPRK is not entering the stage of use of nuclear weapons and making that pretext for preemptive strike. Now, so far we have seen the longest history of this exercise, a very notorious, very shameful history. We have seen the massive number of troops you cannot see in any part of the world. And we have seen the purpose of this exercise, purely aggressive nature. And nobody can deny this is not a military maneuvers targeted against the DPRK. It's, not, it's no longer simply military exercises. Now, in this world, through these facts, there is no such as such a country in this world as the United States, who has been deploying massively continuous spaces for half a century, over half a century, going beyond six decades in the doorstep of other country. And there is no such country like the United States in this world who is continuing to insist this is simple and military exercises while this is involving over half a million troops from the military bases overseas and from South Korea and surrounding vicinities. And the reality speaks very clearly. The U.S. advertisement, so-called annual and routine defensive in nature military exercises, is ridiculous argument aimed at deceiving the world and covering up their aggressive nature. As far as the perspective of annual and routine is concerned, the dialogue and negotiation should be made on annual and routine basis, not confrontation and joint military exercises. Now, so far, we have seen the first motive and reason why the DPRK made second another request to the UN Security Council. Now, the second motive and reason why the DPRK made a formal, another formal request is because the U.S. is militarily blocking whatever moves towards easing of tension, dialogue, reconciliation on the Korean Peninsula. As you know already well, our Supreme Leader Marshal Kim Jong-un made a warm appeal in his historic New Year address 2014 on securing national security and peace and on creating 
good climate for north-south relations improvement. Upholding the warm appeal of our supreme leader, the DPRK advanced various, very realistic and practical proposals, including advancing of the crucial proposal from the National Defense Commission starting January, followed by another crucial proposal, special proposal by the same a commission and followed by the government statement of the DPRK. And most recently, marking the August 15th, the National Liberation Day from the Japanese military occupation in 1945, the National Committee for Reunification of the Country advanced another very important proposal on unconditional suspending the planned U.S. South Korea a joint military exercises, Ulti Freedom Guardian. And this is aimed at settling the hostile relations between the parties and to remove the danger of nuclear war. And as we have seen already in the crucial proposals and special <coughs> proposals, likewise the proposal of the National Committee for Unification, in all these proposals are reflected the principles position of the DPRK on easing of the tension and bringing the national unity and securing peace and security and reconciliation based on united strengths of the entire nation by itself. And also on, <coughs> sorry, uh, suspending all hostile military acts conducted by US and South Korea jointly. But when you look at the response from the United States, the U.S. against the international trend, which has given every time an active welcome and support for this proposal, the U.S. did not show any positive response. They had the challenge by opening military provocations and undertaking and pushing ahead with U.S. South Korea joint uh, military exercises. And if you observe from the beginning of the year up to this point of time of the year, we can observe two major factors on the Korean Peninsula. The first factor is the move of the DPRK, who has been continuing to make very generous, very sincere, and very consistent efforts towards easing of the tension and reconciliation on the Korean Peninsula. And there is another factor, very negative, of the United States, who has been in contrast, continuing to intentionally undermine whatever the moves progressive towards easing of tension and North-South relations improvement, and who has been continuing intentionally to aggravate tension on the Korean Peninsula, who has been continuously, continuing intentionally to drive the situation on the Korean Peninsula to the brink of the war. Now, as you can see, I briefed the two basic uh, motives and reasons why the DPRK made another formal request to the UN Security Council. And uh, it is already one week since we made a a presentation with a formal letter in the name of the permanent representative of DPRK to United Nations to the current president of the UN Security Council on the 18th August last year, Monday, the very same day when US opened this Ulti Freedom Guardian joint military exercises. And we have not yet received any single word of formal letter, what reaction they are giving. This is the UN Security Council of today we are facing. And the failure by the uh, UN Security Council to open an emergency meeting with the reference to this Ulti Freedom Guardian, Guardian Joint Military Exercises as the agenda item of this council clearly indicates <coughs> it is a big, <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> This is because of the coercive pressure from the United States. It is also showing the rampant 
infringement upon the purposes and principles reflected in the UN Charter. This is uh, simply exposing the UN Security Council total lack of impartiality in its working method, total lack of responsibility in the mandate of the U UN Security Council, whose mandate is to secure peace and security as the fundamental key element of its mandate. Now, we are observing another factor regarding the working method of the UN Security Council. The UN Security Council is continuing to turn away from our request for emergency meeting with regard to these uh, joint military exercises, which is the, the root cause of all problems related to the peace and security on the Korean Peninsula. While they are taking issue of the tactical rocket launches as self-defensive counter-actions against these exercises. This is showing the UN Security Council is being abused by one specific country, the United States, one permanent member of the UN Security Council in the best interest of this country, not in the best interest of the world peace and security under the mandate of the Security Council. With regard to this attitude of the UN Security Council, DPOK can observe another factor that since in case the UN Security Council is not holding emergency meeting as requested by the DPRK, this will send very wrong message to the international community. This council, by being silent, continuing to be silent, to approve as a rightful act with regard to the United States, who has been continuing to deploy for over half a century, for six decades, whatever number of troops, whatever number of weapons of mass destruction, including nuclear weapons, in the doorstep of the DPRK and holding gangster-like war exercises. And it is also, it will send another wrong message to the international community by keeping silent with regard to these exercises. The UN Security Council is encouraging the United States to continue this kind of very provocative, very aggressive, very dangerous, dangerous joint military exercises against the DPRK. If the UN Security Council has a mandate still for securing world peace and security of the world, this council should immediately address the root cause of this problems disturbing and undermining the peace and security on the Korean Peninsula by removing the cancer-like existence of these very dangerous joint military exercises of US and South Korea from the Korean Peninsula. Since the US is not taking up these joint military exercises of US and South Korea into the Asian item, the UN Security Council should also no longer should take the counteraction of the DPRK, which is very legitimate, self-defense in response to the provocative, aggressive nuclear war exercises being conducted by the United States. And also, they should not point their finger as a threat towards this military counteractions of the DPRK deceiving the world. Also, the U.S. and the UN, U.N. Security Council should not play condemning the counter-elections of the DPRK in response to these exercises. Now, at this point of time, the situation is being driven into touch and go and situation because of these joint military exercises. The entire army and people of DPRK 
are closely watching every move of this exercise with the greatest vigilance. And on the 17th August, the general staff of the Korean People's Army solemnly declared to the world, DPRK will conduct the most powerful preemptive nuclear strike against the United States since the U.S. openly declared it will use what we have seen, so-called tailored deterrence strategy, which is the strategy of taking preemptive strike against the DPRK. As long as the U.S. exposing its true and real intention to remove the regime of the DPRK in the world by making this DPRK targeted joint military exercises on annual and routine basis, the DPRK will do respond the same way by making our military counteractions on annual and routine basis in a more increased, intensified manner. I thank you, distinguished colleagues. And if you have a candidate, yeah, please. Hello, my name is Shauna McGee from Kyoto News. We'd like to thank you on behalf of the United Nations Correspondents Association for holding this briefing. Um, we understand that you did submit the two letters, and it doesn't seem it's unlikely that it'll, it will be taken up as an agenda item. What is your next course of action, if any? Do you have another channel to work with? Um, and what, what do you, if it were taken up as an agenda item, what would you hope to achieve in, in the discussion if it were ever taken up? Thank you for your kind words welcoming me for this press conference. And uh, thank you for your very important question and the fundamental and key element in my a press briefing today. And now question what we are going to get. And the uh, answer is uh, very clear. Since the US raised the DPRK's legitimate self-defensive counteractions in response to their military exercise, they have raised condemning our legitimate counteractions. In our land, in our territorial waters, in our air, we did not go beyond territorial space of the DPRK. On the other hand, the United States, they went far and far beyond their territory. As I told you, they have been holding this exercise since 1954, immediately following the Korean War ceasefire in 1953. Therefore, we regard this Ulti Freedom Guardian is having shameful, notorious record, as I told you, in terms of its history. Every year they held it. And target is very clear. It is a tailored deterrence strategy. And I briefed you what is the tailored, tailored deterrence strategy. So, since they raised, and it was the U.S. who raised, so the U.S. should not block, block this Asian item to be discussed as we requested. And U.S. is, as I said, is a cancer in the peace and security of the Korean Peninsula by, by drawing the division, division line on the Korean Peninsula. It is a one country, one nation, one culture, one language, one history. It was because of the U.S. drawing division line, 1945, Korean War broken out for three years. Now another war they are going to impose on the Korean Peninsula, simply DPRK can no longer allow to drop another bombs on the heads of our people. And we cannot simply allow this kind of DPRK targeted exercise to continue unabated. Yes, please. I just wanted to ask since um, this 
agenda item may not be taken up in the Security Council. Do you plan to take it to the um, General Assembly in the fall? And also, which high-level officials are confirmed to be attending the UNGA this year? Will the Foreign Minister come? Yeah, that is another very important question. And regarding General Assembly question, this is not we are considering. We are talking about Security Council. And uh, the first letter was presented July 21st to the, uh, to the Security Council. Second one, 18th August. And we gave you all the motives and reasons of why. United States, as I told you earlier, did not raise in the General Assembly on DPRK's counteractions, tactical rocket launches. In response to their military exercises, they raised in the Security Council. That's why we are raising it. If they did not raise, and if they don't raise anymore, they will never ever raise this issue again. Because once they don't raise it, then we will not raise it. But once they continue to raise it, condemn us on the so-called ground of sanction resolutions against the DPRK, which are very illegal against the charter purposes and principles against the sovereign nation, member state, DPRK. Yes. Uh, yes, Joseph Klein, Canada Free Press. Uh, you, you mentioned these exercises have occurred uh, yearly since 1954, and yet there has been no actual act of overt aggression by the U.S. or South Korea in terms of bombing North Korea, uh, the DPRK, or anything of, of that nature. They've just been annual exercises. So why, after all this time, given that there have been no such actual attacks against your country, uh, are you raising these uh, alarm bells now? And secondly, when you said that the, um, your government uh, mentioned the, the preemptive strike against the U uh, U.S., is this a, are you reserving the r right to do so, or is this an actual threat uh, in response to your uh, d characterization of the uh, tailored deterrent strategy? Thank you. Thank you for your concern, the Korean Peninsula. The question, now the United States has been holding, without speaking a single ear. Now why is it becoming very dangerous, and we are raising this issue, the nature and the scale and objective? When comparing the previous exercises the same annual and routine, as they say. They never say it. We are targeting openly at Pyongyang occupation. They have never said just annual and routine. But now, I think I gave a briefing, the previous press conference, coming into the first decade of this century, 2010. They started to openly put the name of the DPRK as the target of these exercises, whatever. Already they held springtime, February to April for full two months, which was another, compared to this one, the same, very aggressive and provocative. And again, they openly said the purpose is to have Pyongyang occupation. Now, this exercise, again, tailored deterrence strategy. That's why we are saying this is a very aggressive uh, nature. Very aggressive nature. And we can no longer tolerate this exercise as simply annual and routine. And they are going beyond the red line. And regime change is number one target. And this is approved by all the rhetorics given by Kelly, the current Secretary of State of U.S. State Department, and all other politicians. They are openly saying DPRK is evil. This is what once referred to DPRK as excess of evils by Bush administration. So they are continuing this kind of policy to eliminate DPRK militarily. That's why it becomes very dangerous 
very aggressive, very serious. And I'm sorry, the second question? The second question was, you, you, you mentioned toward the end of your uh, briefing uh, that the DPRK um, could, uh, in response to the strategy, the tailored uh, <coughs> deterrent strategy, conduct a preemptive nuclear strike against the United States. Oh, yes, what yes, I'm trying yes. to uh, understand is that uh, just the DPRK's reservation of right to do so, or is that an actual uh, threat? No, this is uh, both. We reserve the right to defend ourselves. In the, under the UN Charter, as a sovereign state, you have full sovereign right to defend the DPRK and our people, our land, from the aggression war, from the outside forces. And also, we are targeting in practice, and we are ready to move into action, and our military general staff of the Korean People's Army, as I said in the keynote address, already made it clear, very clear, Korean People's Army is targeting at the U.S. for nuclear permanent strike. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN Coalition for Access, thanks for the briefing. You said that, that you didn't hear back from the Council, and, and, and in front of the Security Council, and I think it was last Wednesday, Lyle Grant of the UK said, quote, we as President of the Council will not be scheduling a discussion of the letter. So I wanted to know, are, are they supposed to write back to you? Do you think it's sort of it's bad form just to, to say it at a stakeout? And also, I was looking at the U.S. military's website. They claim that there's 10 other, they call them United Nations sending states, taking part in the exercise, including the UK, France, Australia, Colombia. Are those, how big is the presence in the exercise of these other countries? Is it just a fig leaf or is it a, I just wondered if you could respond to, to, to them saying that it's tw at least 12 nations involved. Thanks. No, oh, every time the US is advertising on the level of the troops, they are not clearly referring to the number. Every time they are holding exercises, on the pretext of this exercise, they are bringing in all different types of nuclear weapons. You can name all what they have. United States is the largest nuclear weapon state. They already showed by established practice, aircraft carrier George Washington, nuclear powered, and B-52 strategic nuclear bombers, and Tomahawk cruise missiles carrying nuclear-powered submarines, and they have different brands. And these are the most representative ones. And they have all related, uh, most sophisticated weapons related to this equipment. And now, concerning the number of the troops, as I said, over half a million. And this number is, you can see, ready to move into real action at any time. And with the full capacity to carry out armed invasion against the DPRK, half a million you can imagine. And now these countries, US and the other Western countries, they are having over 90,000 troops to be involved. Plus over 40,000 civilian population of South Korea. So this is uh, one full-scale war exercise, and the word exercise is not proper word. This is a war ready already. They are fully already ready since they have been holding it annually. It is just a deception of the world. As I said, at any time, they are ready to move into action. And concerning the response, uh, response from the UN Security Council, we, in the name of the permanent representative of the TPRK to the United Nations, presented a formal request addressed to His Excellency Grant, the current <coughs> president, the United <coughs> Kingdom of Great Britain, and in established the practice of courtes and protocol. Whatever answer, they should reply as a sign of respect at least. They are not showing any respect even for the protocol. Whatever answer, they should reply whatever single word. That's what I understand as a protocol. Yes, please. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, Sia Pak from Scan News. During your briefing, you mentioned that uh, Korea is one country united. The only problem is the border that been uh, drawn uh, many years ago. If hypothetically that we take that border, are, is your government willing to melt in with others and then choose the right government for the, for the country for both sides? Thank you. No, we have all the principled position regarding unification of the country. This is artificial line drawn by U.S. This is not what was drawn by Korean Peninsula, Korean people. This was uh, drawn by the United States. You can give the name of that soldier, Bonstil, who was a nighttime duty for, with the task of drawing that line. That simple one soldier has drawn this line over one country. Can you allow the other country, one soldier, to come in and to draw dividing line in the United States or in other parts of the world? It is a simple arrogance of a power country. And unification of the country, we have all the principles and the uh, agreements and declarations. The most typical one is June 15th Joint Declaration adopted in 2000 by in the summit meeting of the North and South Korea, and another 2007, another practical implementation declaration in 2007. So we are consistent in insisting these declarations are containing everything, whatever, military uh, reconciliation, political uh, unity, and also economic cooperation by our nation itself in the spirit of bio nation itself. That is the core factor of these declarations. This was given by the international community through resolution of the UN General Assembly, unanimously, 2000, 2007, two times General Assembly. And the entire Korean community gave great welcome to this, and we made headway towards reconciliation and exchange of people in all different fields. But now, the South Korea, different political uh, parties came into the power, and they turned this down, shifted everything uh, under the pressure of the United States. So this is uh, uh, what is happening now in, on the Korean Peninsula with regard to the unification of the country. Yes, yes please. Ambassador, this may be relevant uh, this weekend. Um, this weekend there was a dangerous potential confrontation between a U.S. surveillance plane uh, over the South China Sea and um, a Chinese plane. And the Chinese said uh, there was a large-scale, high-frequency, close proximity surveillance by the United States that endangers Chinese, U.S. maritime and aviation safety, and that is the root cause behind any accidents. Do you think there's any connection between um, the U.S. surveillance in the South China Sea, close to China, and what's going on now, the U.S.-South Korean military exercises? I or think, as Madam, you, you raised a very strategic question related to the strategic security environment in that part of the world. We can go to the question of a defense strategy policy of the United States, the current Obama administration. In 2011, the U.S government, the current government, shifted the policy, shifted the, the pivot to Asia-Pacific region. And under this, 60% of the outside the deployed forces to be realigned into the part of <coughs> this part of the world. And now, why? This is to contain the power countries existing in this part of the world. You can understand who I'm making reference to. And under this strategy, the U.S. is getting crazy to contain the power, rising power. And now what is the relation between what is happening on the Korean Peninsula? Now they're going to have militarily eliminate the DPRK, and they are going to expand and in tighten the encirclement circle against power countries. So this is the strategy in brief. I, I'm sorry, uh, I think uh, another, another uh, uh, press conference is already scheduled, so I'm here going beyond this time. I'm very sorry, and we can look forward to another opportunity. Thank you for your participation.